The year was 1997, and Fleetwood Mac, one of the most iconic bands in rock history, was set to perform a surprise reunion show. The venue was filled with thousands of fans eager to see Fleetwood Mac back together again. As the band began to play Silver Springs, a B-side from the now iconic Rumors album, the audience grew silent as the familiar beats began to trickle out. What followed was the culmination of decades marked by heartbreak, reconciliation, and the enduring impact of a simple song. Fleetwood Mac's Silver Springs gives us insight into the tumultuous relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham that fueled some of the band's most legendary music. Written against the backdrop of their turbulent romance, the song serves as a reflection of the raw intensity and emotional depth that eventually contributed to the breakup of the band in 1987. Silver Springs transcends heartbreak offering a glimpse into the complexities of love, loss, and longing. The creation of Silver Springs and its subsequent exclusion from the Rumors album serve as poignant reminders of the band's internal strife. This song stands as an anthem, diving into the complexities of navigating breakups and showcasing the resilience Stevie Nicks needed to keep the band afloat amidst emotional and personal turmoil. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham's relationship began in the late 1960s, when the two met while attending Menlo Atherton High School in California. They crossed paths as high school seniors. Buckingham, a member of the local psychedelic rock band Fritz, invited Nicks to join as the lead singer when two of the members left for college. At first, their connection was purely musical, with both sharing a love for the music but not yet for each other. Fritz would go on to disband in the early 1970s, and Buckingham and Nix continued dating other people. They eventually made the decision to relocate to Los Angeles. It was there that the former friendship turned into something romantic, and they became a couple. Stevie looks back fondly even now. The beginning of our relationship was the best time of our lives. As their musical partnership flourished, Nix and Buckingham caught the attention of record executives and were eventually signed to a record deal. That deal ultimately flopped, and Stevie would have to find work as a waitress while Buckingham went to tour with another band. Cracks had started to form between the two, with Stevie going on to say, I ironed his jeans and sewed moons and stars on them and made the house beautiful. I was the cleaning lady. In December 1974, Mick Fleetwood reached out to Buckingham, inviting him to join the established Fleetwood Mac. Buckingham made it clear that he and Nix were a package deal, insisting that both of them would have to join and contribute to the band's self-titled 1975 album. Luckily for Fleetwood, he agreed. This album became their first international smash hit and reached number one in the US charts. The success of Fleetwood Mac's self-titled album catapulted the band to international fame, but it also placed strains on the personal relationships within the group. As they worked on a follow-up album, which would become the iconic rumors, tensions began to grow in the band. The marriage of bandmates, Christine and John McVie, began to unravel, mirroring the disintegration of Nick's and Buckingham's own relationship. Of the time, Stevie said, We joined Fleetwood Mac, and Buckingham became very jealous. I was trustworthy, but he didn't trust me, so he tortured me every day until I ended up having an affair. Amidst these mounting tensions, a pivotal fight in a parking lot marked the end of their romantic relationship. Pressures of fame combined with the rigors of touring and recording proved too much for the pair. As they were wrapping up recording the final 12 songs for Rumors in Sausalito, tensions between Lindsay and Stevie reached a breaking point. Just before they were set to return to Los Angeles, they had a heated argument. It was then that Stevie Nicks decided to end their relationship, telling Buckingham, I think that we've gone just about as far as we can go. Despite this, she assured him that their breakup wouldn't mean the end of the band but it did mark the end of their romantic involvement. 
the creation and subsequent exclusion of Silver Springs from Fleetwood Mac's seminal album Rumors provides a glimpse into the band's internal dynamics, particularly the tumultuous relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham that came after their breakup. Written by Nicks, Silver Springs emerged as a deeply personal reflection of the emotional turbulence and longing that characterized her relationship with him. The title Silver Springs was inspired by the town of Silver Springs, Maryland. During a tour visit, Nix fell in love with how the town sounded. In an interview, she once said, It sounded like a pretty fabulous place to me. Stevie Nix would go on to add that the title carried symbolic weight, reflecting what Lindsay could have been to her had things not gone south. She wrote lyrics that captured the pain of unrequited love and the yearning for reconciliation. As the band worked on finalizing the tracklist for Rumors, tensions were running high within Fleetwood Mac, exacerbated by the strained relationship between Nix and Buckingham. At the record plant studio in Sausalito, California, Mick Fleetwood pulled Nix into the parking lot. It was there that he told her Silver Springs was cut from the album due to its length. Fleetwood preferred I Don't Want to Know, a duet between Nix and Buckingham about their breakup. Stevie Nix was pissed. Lindsey Buckingham himself acknowledged the complexity of the decision to exclude Silver Springs from rumors, noting that it was a real heartbreaker for both him and Nix. In his opinion, the song's omission required an elaborate exercise of denial to justify. The story of Silver Springs would stop there, at least for a while. Following its recording, the band performed the song live a few times between 1976 and 77, before setting it aside for the rest of the 1970s and the entirety of the 1980s. That is until 1997 when the group got back together for a reunion show, The Dance. Stevie Nicks and Lindsey Buckingham had long moved on from their past romance, having experienced love and loss with others since their time together. Old memories that once were forgotten came back to the forefront during the show. In the middle of performing Silver Springs, Nicks turns over to lock eyes with Buckingham as she sings the song's bridge. Their eyes meet, and what came next was Nick's cathartic release. Despite the passage of time and the inevitable changes that came with it, the intensity of the bond was still palpable. In that moment, the 1997 live performance of Silver Springs transcended its status as just another song in Fleetwood Mac's extensive catalog. Stevie Nicks later said, I wanted people to stand back and really watch and understand what the relationship with Lindsay was. The song serves as a reminder that old flames die hard. After all those years, the feelings remained unchanged band would go on to do a string of reunion tours, seemingly patching up the broken bonds that were created when the band first broke up in the 80s. Then came 2018. Lindsey Buckingham revealed that he would be leaving the band, claiming that Stevie Nicks had fired him after a bad night. Nicks stated that she had grown tired of dealing with Buckingham, feeling that he caused more trouble than good. I could publicly reflect on the many reasons why, and perhaps I will do that someday in a memoir, but suffice it to say we could start in 1968 and work up to 2018 with a litany of very precise reasons why I will not work with him. What's clear is that the stare she sent him on the stage in 1997 was not an act. It was real. A distillation of the fury and hurt she still harbored, even after all those years. While the two may never have found their silver springs in each other, the song serves as a testament to the power of their lyricism and genius as a group. Luckily for us, but perhaps less so for them, Stevie was right. The sound of her voice continues to haunt all of us, Buckingham included. 
Through all that pain, they created something that can be listened to for ages, carrying the weight of a tumultuous relationship in just under five minutes.